Hey guys, welcome back to Front Porch Catholic, where we talk about the grit and glory of domestic life on our Ohio hobby farm, which is still in winter mode. <laughs> I wanted to share with you today one of the greatest blessings of my life as a woman, as a married woman, as a mother, and as a homesteader. One of the most incredible blessings of my life is living among my people. <laughs> All right, I'm out here giving some hay, checking on some animals. I had kids go off on a little field trip today with their grandparents, so I'm here doing some stuff alone and I've just reflected a lot lately on family on the importance of place you hear these guys there they're talking to me they want their grain they want their hay <laughs> can't blame them it's breakfast time so I want to share some of those reflections with you as I go about the day and um, I know that they'll resonate with you guys Morning, I'm feeding some of the grass hay that we scythed out of our uh, small pasture the spring or sorry the summer really and had dry in the fall we had it dry out in the field in like a haystack one of those old-fashioned things and then Joe brought it in here with um, with a lift on his tractor it's been up here all winter we're just getting to the end of it we have to buy some hay bales later today because we're not sure we're gonna make this last until we have grass The only difficulty with feeding hay this way is it's difficult to kind of quantify how much I'm giving them. Normally I go by like small bale flakes, which are like those little squares. Those squares that come in like the packed bale. And if it's a small square bale, they're about 12, 15 flakes in a bale. And the ratio for donkeys is two flakes a day per donkey. And so I'm just trying to gauge like this loose stuff, if it were compressed into a flake, what that would look like. So I'm trying to feed 10 flake equivalents out of this hay that's like stacked here in our barn and been pressed down throughout the winter. It's the stuff that we put up in August and September. Joe dried it out in the yard in an old fashioned haystack and it could have actually been fine there all winter, even till now, but for convenience sake, we just lifted it up in the hay mouth so that we could you know, put it down the chute. So we handled it a lot, but <clears throat> you know, it's convenient in the end. That's what we're going for.
Well, I wanted to talk about this particular dimension of life because it really came to the forefront for me this week when I was searching for hay. I was on Craigslist looking for some small square bales because the hay we put up is not going to last us until we have enough green pasture for the donkeys to go out on and we've got a pig coming and she needs hay too. So we just thought we'd better buy the rest of our supply, make sure we have enough. So I'm looking on Craigslist and I contact this fellow who has listed his hay and we're texting back and forth. And it turns out that we knew each other through like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> and let me explain why. It's because Joe and I live in a place where our families have been raised for generations. Where we lived for a dozen years, it was like 16 miles from the town where my husband's ancestors came to when they moved over here from Germany. And we go visit their graves. They're like all buried right around there. All their homesteads are right, you know, within a stone's throw of our home. You know, you can look on old plat maps and track down, you know, who owned what land for how long and who, you know, which son they passed it on to and who married who and, the, and family farms have been passed down. And that is like a really common thing from where, um, you know, where we live. This is a rural community. People tend to um, want to put down roots here and they have for a long time. And so like, because that's my husband's history and that was this gentleman's history, he was like, oh, hey, um, you know, where do you live? Like trying to calculate how long a distance it would be for us to get there to get his hay. And I described like our crossroads and he's like, oh, my father-in-law owns land right by you. And I was like, oh, cool. Well, where do you, you know, where am I coming to get this hay? And he described his place. And I was like, oh, that's right down the road from where my grandpa owned a, a lake cottage <laughs> for decades. And where my parents are building their future home. And he's like, oh, well, you know, this is my last name. And I said, oh, well, the people with that last name bought our house <laughs> a year ago. And I, do you know them? Are you related to them? It was a different branch, but they're all best friends. And it's only because people have stayed home and made their home in their ancestral home that we can have these connections today, which just go so far in building relationships in building up a homestead community, a rural, rural community. I think that's a fantastic thing. We just know people. People are familiar. When you are from a place, your family name speaks for you. And that, you know, is another great reason to like continue to preserve and honor your family name and to do good things so that your family reputation can live on and succeed. And then I was thinking about my faith heritage. If it's not clear by our channel title, we're a Catholic family. <laughs> and as far back as we can both trace, our families have been Catholic, which is a legacy in and of itself. Hello, donkeys. Give you a little treat. They might get a little loud fighting over some treats. Ooh, that could be entertaining. <laughs> We recently had a priest to dinner, and that's a really great thing to do. If you've never had a priest or your parish priest over for supper, you should do it. They love it. They love being with families. We love having them in our home, um, and they're always great company. It's always good to get their perspectives on life and to just kind of share your perspective so you can help them minister to you and your people. So my people, my Catholic people, my children are fourth generation parishioners where we live. And that's only because, you know, my grandparents moved here from Cleveland, had my dad, he was a parishioner, and now my kids are parishioners here. They've all been, well, my dad was baptized at that parish, and then my kids have been baptized at that parish. My husband was baptized at that parish. My husband um, and I were married there. And I just think it's so incredible to like know that we worship in a place where our ancestors worshiped. And like, just to share that Catholic perspective of being linked to other humans all the way back to the dawn of time and to be linked to people who are already in heaven praying for us, whom we can ask to intercede for us, especially as we're coming up onto Lent. That's like really in my mind, this whole life, eternal life, death thing. I just think that's incredible. And I think we often lose sight of it in our modern culture because we wanna move away. We wanna go find that bigger, better piece of land, that more perfect barn, that more uh, mature woods. Maybe we want bigger, greener pastures, literally and figuratively. But because we live here, because we live at home, I've been blessed by being able to see this legacy, being able to like really hunt it down and to come to know the heritage that was like laid out for me. Also, on a more practical note, we have 
people who can help us on the farm whom we trust. If we have to go away or we want to go away on a vacation, we can leave our animals and our property in trusted hands for a time without having to like, you know, really vet anybody or bill anybody <laughs> or get billed by anybody, <laughs> which would be worse. And also we are surrounded by family who can help us care for our children and who teach us things about being parents, about being a married couple, about being a family in this modern culture, about how to, you know, fence a pasture or how to trim goat hooves. Like we can gain all that knowledge right from the people who live around us. So why am I saying all this? It's because I want to encourage you to consider where your blessings lie. I wanna encourage you to take a deeper look, like if you're trying to move away and get a bigger pasture or a bigger homestead, or if you wanna move away to get a, you know, a different community, I wanna like ask you to take a second look at your own home, at your own community, and see where the blessings are, because I think they're there. I, and we don't always see them, maybe because we don't have the eyes to see them or the maturity to see them. I mean, when I was in my 20s, my early 20s, I knew being home, would be valuable, but I didn't really see all the reasons why. And I think it just kind of comes with time. Perspective changes with time. And so I want to share that today with you in case you're looking for a new homestead. Maybe try to stay close to your family. Maybe try to stay close to your friends, to the people who have surrounded you for your whole life. Um, I know that's not a possibility for everybody, but if it is a possibility for you, I mean, it's just a huge source of blessings. So I want to encourage you to look at that again. So until the next video, I hope you guys are blessed. I hope you have a wonderful day on your homestead. We are looking forward to spring. I see some green grass. It's not very warm right now. It's like, I think it's in the high 20s, but it is sunny. The days are getting longer. <laughs> spring is right around the corner. So until, yeah, until the next video, I hope you guys are blessed and I will see you next time. Bye.